Hey, welcome guys. Thank you very much for tuning in today. We're going to talk about Google, what Google wants. Uh, you know, a lot of people think that it's complicated. Search engine optimization, all these buzzwords that you hear, search engine marketing, inbound leads, outbound leads. Uh, really, it's down to the basics, guys. And I just want to uh, peel back the onion a little bit and tell you what Google wants from you uh, in your website. The number one thing that Google wants is more people to use Google, right? So they want to provide their customers with the ultimate experience, meaning they genuinely want the person searching to find a good result, a good result. Each of us has the ability to give Google what they want in order to rank better and in order to have uh, more traffic so that you can get those leads and people do call you and say, hey, I'm looking at your website and I'd like to buy one of your services. So I'm gonna share my screen real quick with you guys. To get I like to call it the three circles of search. There's a, a technical side, there's a, a content side, and there's a popularity side. Google was founded 22 years ago last week on September 4th. And almost since the first day that Google uh, was public and people could use it, uh, you know, obviously a lot of people have been trying to vie for the number one spot. That's the goal. I want to be number one on Google. I want to be on the first page of Google. Most people, I think that it's 80, 90% don't even go to the second page of Google. So the goal has always been, I need to be on the top of Google for my keywords. People have been trying to artificially inflate their value for over 20 years. They've been, every time Google comes out with one of these big updates, it's because they're trying to thwart a scheme where people are trying to cheat their way to the top instead of being an actual quality good result. For example, uh, Several years ago, it was known that if you had a lot of websites linking to your website, Google may have thought that was a, you were a good website. So immediately, people started posting links wherever they could. They would litter forums. They would litter, um, they would create directories. A lot of trash directories were created in this time. And they were trying to artificially inflate how many genuine links they had back to their website in order to fool Google's algorithm. You know, is that just an example about how Google's had to uh, fight against people who want to artificially inflate themselves and really give us, the honest, hardworking people, a shot at being on the first page. So I wanna go ahead and touch with the first circle, the manual. In 2015, Google released a manual about 150 pages plus of exactly what they were looking for. You know, what type of content they were looking for, what page structure they were looking for there for the first time, were giving us a general idea about what they were actually trying to achieve. And again, they're trying to give people who work hard and are honest and local a shot at being on the first page. These are the best results. One of the things that Google came out with was an acronym, EAT, E-A-T. It stands for Expertise, Authority, and Trustworthiness. They're looking for your content to be written from an expert, somebody that's been doing it repeatedly, and they're looking for somebody who they can trust, Google is. So if you try to go the cheap route, and I like this, there's three options, right? You can do it yourself, which a lot of people don't want to do. You can do it cheap wrong, meaning you paid a very little amount of money and you got it done wrong, or you can hire Hawk Marketing, meaning you could hire a professional like Kat Harvey or Ruthie Bowles to make sure that your content is exactly the way that Google wants it, uh, written at an expert level with authority from a trustworthy source. That's what EAT stands for. 
I got to take a pause real quick, guys. I got to let the dog out. Come here. Oh. He's about here hounding me. All animals love me. They all love me. I, I take pride in that one little thing about me is that I seem to be able to get along with the animals very quickly. So we just talked about eat, expertise, authority, trustworthiness. They want this content either written by the person who owns the company, somebody who's been in the industry a long time, or an expert copywriter. Uh, preferably, like we were just speaking about Cat, uh, preferably a writer that can optimize the content for search. Another acronym that they came out with was your money or your life. Y-M-O-Y-L, your money or your life. Google wanted to take an ultra sharp look at industries and companies that could really end up causing physical or financial harm to their searchers. They are almost taking a liability in their own hands and trying to make sure that people when they're searching, they're searching in a safe environment and they're gonna get a safe result. So Google takes a look extra hard on things that might offer medical advice, content that might lead to an online shopping scam, uh, bad investment opportunities. They just want us to not go to some strange website and get hacked, a virus. Uh, next thing you know, we're looking at images that are unsavory. You know, there are places online still that um, are trying to get us. So Google has taken an extra safeguard just to make sure that these type of websites are scrutinized and looked at even harder to make sure that it's a safe environment for their searcher. Again, Google's priority is to get more people to use their product. They can surf more ads, they make more money, and people come back over and over again. So that's, they're really worried about the customer experience and they treat it as a priority. That's why we have to treat our content as something that's trustworthy you know, from an authority perspective and as an expert level. Another thing that Google is constantly looking out for is what I like to call OPC, other people's content. They don't like it when you post uh, on your website the same that somebody else has posted. In fact, they have a seven word rule, seven word rule. So if there's seven words in the same order on the internet, it's a red flag. You'd think, oh, how do they know? But the honest truth is, is that people have been using plagiarism search engines for almost 20 years now for colleges. You can take a piece of content from your website and copy and paste into a plagiarism search engine, which you can easily find on Google, and it will tell you every place on Google that that content is, the date that it was first posted, and the first person who posted it. So if somebody is writing content for you, you need to make sure that they're checking against a plagiarism checker. And even, you know, Kat will tell you, even uh, when she runs her original content through, she might have to make some adjustments because, hey, she might have written a sentence very similar to somebody else who had written a sentence. You know, so we just want to make sure that the content is unique as possible. There's two exceptions that I've found where you can post the same content elsewhere and not get dinged, meaning you have a blog and you wanna kinda of push that blog out. Uh, Google my business and after several weeks on your website, you can post it to a LinkedIn article. So that is a little bit of a way to get an extra leg up on, uh, on your content. And things are ever changing, you know, so hopefully there'll be more opportunities and they won't take those opportunities away. Google goes by everybody's website about once a month. The goal is to get them to come by a little bit more often than that. Imagine how many times Google has to go to a website like eBay or Amazon to make sure that all the results are up to date. So imagine how many times a day eBay and Amazon update their content. It's, it's really about how often you update you know, we are local, we are kind of small fries out here for the most part. If we can get Google to come by our website two, three or four times a month, I think we're doing really good in our local market. 
the goal though is to make sure that when Google comes by, he sees something new. I mean, you wouldn't want to watch the same rerun of Mr. Ed for 20 years. So Google doesn't want to see the same homepage and the same, you know, product and service pages that you've had on your website for the last 20 years, five years, two years, one year. You should be constantly updating your website at least once a month with some sort of content. That's telling Google that you're in this, you're being serious, and you want to be a good search result. Let's take a classic example that everybody can understand. We've got a gas station, a mechanic up the street, who's posting articles about how you can change your own oil, how you can switch out your light bulbs, things that you should check on your car before winter, things you should do before a vacation. He's offering the community great helpful information. And if you need more help, he is there for you. So you got this guy over here and he's humming away. He's posting once a month, he's posting once a month. And then you've got another car repair center that doesn't believe in updating their website. And they've had this website that's been there for eight years. It's never been updated, it's never changed. Which website do you think Google would, would gift the, the higher ranking to? The one that's more up to date, the one that's more relevant. I mean, an eight year old result, think about how times change and how quickly things change. A one year old result is old and dated, you know? So Google is looking for new episodes of your website every time they want to go and visit it, you know, and they say, oh, he's got something new. Let me come back. I can't wait to see. Oh, something new again. Let me put this on my favorites list. You know, now Google's coming by two or three times a month because you've created this momentum by posting regularly every month, month over month, you know, and you're going to get rewarded. Just to inject, Pablo and I were talking about spending time versus investing time. And creating content for your website and writing articles is a great example of investing your time. You know, that is gonna pay dividends down the road. You are building a, a huge snowball of momentum. You know, and the further down the road, the bigger it gets. And, and obviously that's exactly what we want. So again, very easy. Would Google rank you higher if you post it every month or would they rank you higher if you never post it at all? I think we know the answer to that. I wanna to talk to you guys really quick about content versus home pages. Often, and especially in the past, people focus hard on their home page and having the perfect home page. Now we're finding that our visitors aren't seeing our home page as much our visitors aren't um, coming into our website from our home page can you guys see the three circles of search yes all right so i want to show you this example of uh, a google search clean fuels we search fuel polishing maryland and i want you to pay close attention to the address of the url it's not their home page. It's a blog. It's the Marine Vehicle Fuel Tank Cleaning Services page. The second one is their fuel polishing and filtration services page. Their home page is not to be found. Google wants to skip that extra step of the client going to your home page and then trying to figure out where the information they're looking for is. They want to put them directly into those product and service pages that they think their clients or that your potentials are looking for. Another example, uh, Chesapeake Bay fishing report. Anglers puts out a fishing report every month or every week, actually it's every week. This has created a tremendous amount of traffic that goes to their website. Fishing reports from weeks and months and years ago are still ranking driving traffic to their website. For example, if I was looking for something for the upcoming fall season, I might read last year's fall report. And all the while I'm being shown uh, their latest products and updates on their, on their sidebars and all the while I'm in their website looking at all their call to actions. The point is, is that their homepage is not up here. The phishing reports drive 90% of the traffic to their website and then that's how they convert uh, the content that, and the products and services that they wanna sell. So when they say content is king, that's more and more looking that way. 
people are more often going to the blogs first and not the home pages. I want to give you guys one more example really quick. You know, the, the, the goal here is the more quality content you have equals the more monthly traffic equals the better rankings that you're going to have in Google. And that's really how it works. As your rank in Google goes up, you have even a better shot of achieving a, a higher rank with Google because now more people are on your website and they're using uh, factors like how long people are on your website reading your articles. And that plays into a huge play into ranking. So the more action you can get through search, the more data they can get from you and the better they'll give you in ranking. So here's a, a report, Denise Dental Studios. And on the left side, you can see the page names. The fourth one, which is just the dash, that's the home page. And I've, I've really focused on the last column, which is entrances. The ab test, uh, the abscess tooth uh, blog is bringing in 377 people to his website. Now we all know what happens when 100 people go to the website. A certain percentage do something. They call. They ask for more information. You know, so that's great that he's bringing in 300 and some from that one blog. The next one is about toothaches, 302, 215. The point is, guys, is you can see that these blog posts are far outranking the homepage and they're offering valuable information to the community. They're becoming great local search results and Denise Dental is getting a lot of traffic because of it. And again, we're tracking the results. We're listening to the phone calls so we can see that it's working. We talked about technical being technical, following the rules, doing the right thing, working hard, being honest. We talked about building content. Uh, there's, a, there's a blog on the website, you know, how to create fantastic content with a full video. Now we're gonna talk about the popularity contest. It sounds so simple, yet it is very difficult to do. That is to get good websites to link to your website. Remember we touched on earlier how people were cheating and trying to get artificial links. They'd even go as far as to have bots scour the internet and drop links in the, uh, the comments of forums and the comments of blogs. You know, so really spammy techniques, Google shut it down. But a lot of those links still exist. A lot of those links are still linking to those websites. So Google actually looks at them as bad links. And if you have a lot of bad websites linking to your website, well, you must be a bad result. You know, so you gotta be very careful as to who's linking to your website. On the flip side, if you have a lot of fantastic local websites linking to your website, you must be a good result. It is that simple. Like your mother used to say, you are who you hang out with. That principle still plays here. What is a really good link? One of the best links that you can have is from your local chamber. Google loves chambers of commerce. So make sure that your website is up to date on the chambers of commerce and organizations that you belong in. Make sure that your information might be on a nonprofit that you're involved in. You may want to write a guest article or share an article with another um, publication like What's Up Magazine or The Capital and try to get a link back to your website. I may want to do a guest blog on Lee's website because Lee's a good local result and Lee and I are in the, about the same realm of consulting, you know, so if I can get a website like Lee's to link back to my website with some good content, that's going to be good. Google's going to look at that very well. So a lot of times when you're building the link strategies, there's a lot of effort that have to go in, not only to make sure that you're not getting a bad link, but you're getting a good one. And there's a lot of checkers or, or tools on Google where you can type in the person's website and see how valuable that link would be to you. Shout out to Brian Lobig. He came on and gave us a uh, workshop a few months ago 
And he actually encourages his clients to join chambers just for the link, not even for the networking. In fact, he put together a list for his clients of all the local chambers around and then did a metric as to how much the membership was and was it worth the link. And more often than not, it was. So make sure that you're up to date on all of your listings. Uh, we've, we've heard about Alignable. I just heard about another one called yesterday called Be Connected. You're able to, maybe if you have a house, uh, ability to be on house, you know, these big websites often come right in uh, with your listing when you look for somebody. If I, for example, search for Pablo Alvarado, I will find his website, but I'll also find his LinkedIn. I'll also find, you know, his other profiles that he's signed up for. I'll, I'll find his Facebook page, you know, so all of these profiles and uh, social media platforms, they all do come up and search and they all do help with your link popularity. I know it sounds complex, even though we still broke it down. If you need more help, I'm going to be here for you. Hey, John, all, all I can say about this is you have an uncanny ability to simplify things, even though on the back end, you're doing a lot of the heavy lifting here. Uh, but just understanding the concept and the things that are important uh, to, to this very, very complex algorithms, um, you know, I've always appreciated your ability to just say, well, here are the three things and let me worry about the rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's exactly, exactly right. I want to show everybody one more thing. I'm going to share my screen. I think this is kind of special and it's revealing and it just goes to show you that everybody can do it if they know what tools to use. I'm going to log into uh, my website real quick, Hulk Marketing Services to uh, WordPress. Everybody close your eyes. I don't see my password. <laughs> it's encrypted. But I want to show you uh, the post page. Can everybody see my screen? Yes? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So these are the blog posts for the, the book, the chapters of the book. Well, we didn't write the book for search engine optimization, right? So when we posted all of the content up here, the two little green lights are onto the right-hand side, they were red and yellow, very few green. So we used a tool that many, many WordPress people use called Yoast. It's like Toast, but with a Y, Yoast. And what Yoast does is it tells us why the light's yellow and why the light's red. The, the, the green lights on the right-hand side represent blog posts that are very healthy SEO-wise. And when we first put all these up there, that it was all scattered across the, the board because we were writing for book purposes, not necessarily for blogging and search purposes. So Kat Harvey went in and she cleaned up all of these blog posts for me because again, they were written for a book, not for search. And she was able to use the tool Yoast. It's like toast, but with a Y. And every time the light was red or yellow, it would tell us what we needed to do. Did we need to uh, link more pages to each other? Did we have our keywords in the right place? Did we use enough keywords? And so it, there's tools out there that help you kind of stay in line with what your goals are. And also to the fact that, you know, it does get so complicated, Pablo, that we need tools. You know, we need tools. There's a tool on uh, that I plugged in to make the website faster because it automatically uh, trims up all the code and stuff and makes things load faster. Now, if I was a developer, I could do that, but imagine how long that would take versus using the tool that's been provided for my industry. Make sure that it doesn't take three weeks to do something that you could just hit a button and it'll tell you what you should do next. So just an example of if you have a whole bunch of blogs and you're not using Yoast and your green, your lights are all red and yellow, you know, Kat and I can definitely help you guys out with that. Lee, what do you think? Oh, John, I think this is uh, really smart. Um, I think many of us, we've got so much on our plate that we could probably learn 
parts and piece of this, pieces of this and do it, but it's probably a wise investment to at least have, you know, you go over our site or Steve or, you know, to have someone else take a look at it and optimize some of this stuff for us. You're right about that because what? we can run a tool, Steve can run a, 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 a tool on your website and it will tell you what to do. You know, so at least you know. You can't just, you can't act like you don't know when you know, right, Lee? Yeah. It, exactly right. It, what, there's, the, there's tools out there. That's not the tools that we use, but if you guys want, I'll put them in the box. It's called Woo Rank and there's SEM Rush. Both yeah. of them you can put a site or two in before they're going to want to charge your credit card, but it'll give you a, a, basically a whole sheet of what's going on. And then you can decide what you want to fix. You know, a lot of people like to do it themselves, and there's a lot to learn in this industry but that will give you the tips of what you need to do to rank. And as John was saying, we're talking about SEO. SEO, um, there's 70% of the people when they search are gonna click in the SEO section. It's the more qualified people. So it's the, you have the pay-per-click, you have the maps, then the SEO section or search engine optimization. That's really where you wanna be. And a lot of the little things, you know, content is absolutely huge, but if you have too much content, if you're just putting more content up, you're, you're, you're kind of spinning your wheels. So run those reports. If you have questions, bring them to John or your marketing person and, uh, you know, challenge them. Why aren't these fixed? Where's my rankings, you know? And then if you're not getting what you want, call somebody, uh, call somebody else. But the business is out there. If you're not ranking, you're not getting inbound leads. If you're not getting inbound leads, you know, and you want them, SEO is one of those digital strategies. So thanks for having me, John. Do a Google search for the um, Google page speed. Run your website through their page speed checker. Website page speed is one of the major factors for Google. Why? Because Google wants somebody who's searching for something to be able to pull that result up fast, 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 especially on a cell phone. So you need your website to load in, uh, within four seconds or less. Two seconds would be best. Guys, thank you very much for letting me give you some tips today. And I'll see you guys next Wednesday. Thank you all so much for coming.